evaluate the following. Here we have subtraction problems with fractions. These aren't really any more difficult than addition problems. The only difference is that once we have a common denominator, we need to subtract the numerators instead of adding them. Let's take a look at some examples. We'll start with 3 fourths minus 1 third. Again, we need to start by finding a common denominator. Here the denominators are 4 and 3. If we look at multiples of 4, we get 4, 8, 12. And 12 is a multiple of 3. So that means it's a multiple of both of the denominators, and therefore it can be our common denominator. Now, to get from 4 to 12, we need to multiply by 3. So we'll also need to take the numerator and multiply by 3. 3 times 3 gives us 9. For the other fraction, 1 third, to get from 3 to 12, we needed to multiply by 4. So we'll also multiply the numerator by 4. 1 times 4 gives us 4. So we have 9 twelfths minus 4 twelfths. Here is where the difference is between addition and subtraction problems. Instead of adding the numerators, now we're going to subtract the numerators. 9 minus 4 is 5, and we keep the de common denominator, so we end up with 5 twelfths as our final answer. It's really not that much more difficult. Let's look at the next one. 5 sixths minus 1 ninth. We need a common denominator here. If we look at multiples of 6, we've got 6, 12, 18. And we recognize 18 as a multiple of 9. So that makes it our least common denominator. Now we need to rewrite the fractions with new numerators. To get from 6 to 18, we have to multiply by 3. So then we'll also have to multiply the numerator by 3. 5 times 3 gives us 15, so that's 15 eighteenths. For the other fraction, 9 needs to get multiplied by 2 to become 18. So if we multiply the top by 2, 1 times 2 gives us 2 for our numerator. And now we can subtract the numerators. 15 minus 2 is 13, and we keep the same denominator leaving us with 13 eighteenths. All right, let's move on to the next one, negative 4 ninths minus 5 twelfths. We've got a negative sign here in addition to the subtraction, but that's okay. We'll keep that negative out front. And we need a common denominator. We've got 9 and 12. If we write out the multiples of 9, we get 9, 18, 27, 36. And we recognize that that's also a multiple of 12. So 36 is going to be our LCD. Now to get from 9 to 36, we have to multiply by 4. So when we multiply the numerator by 4, that gives us 16. Remembering to keep that negative out front. So we've got negative 16 36 minus, let's look at that other fraction. To get from 12 to 36, we have to multiply by 3. So when we multiply the numerator by 3, 5 times 3 is 15. So we end up with 15 36 for that fraction. Now to combine them, we keep the common denominator, and then we have to subtract the numerators but we also have to keep in account that we have this negative here. So the math we're doing for the top is really negative 16 minus 15. I'm going to write that down here just separately. Negative 16 minus 15. Some of you can do that mentally, but if you can't, let's actually write it out. This is the same as negative 16 plus negative 15. They have the same sign, so we're going to take the sum. 16 plus 15 is 31. The larger number is negative, so this is negative 31, and we end up with negative 31 36 as our final answer. And this is a great example of a problem where something that was its own problem before is now just one step in a larger problem. 
Before, negative 16 minus 15 might have been an entire problem that we had done, but now it's just the last step in a much larger problem. This is why we want to get to the point where we're doing some of these steps mentally so that we don't have to write out 37 things for a problem. We can do lots of little bits of that in our heads. All right, we've got one more in this set. Let's look at negative 3 fourteenths minus negative 2 49ths. All right, hopefully you're already seeing when we subtract a negative, that just becomes an addition. So we can simplify this by turning it into negative 3 fourteenths plus 2 49ths. Now we need to find a common denominator here, and the common denominator is actually going to be fairly large. If we look at multiples of 14, we've got 14, 28, we've got 14 times 3, 42, 56, 70, 84, 98, and 98 happens to be 49 times 2. So 98 is going to be our LCD. Whew. There's another way to find that LCD. I'm going to talk about that at the very end, but let's continue as we're going. To get from 14 to 98, you actually have to multiply by 7, and we can see that here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So if we multiply that 3 by 7, it gives us 21. So we've got negative 21 98ths. Now to get from 49 to 98, you multiply by 2. So here 2 times 2 gives us 4. So we've got 4 98ths. And when we add these together, negative 21 plus 4 gives us negative 17 98ths, which is our final answer. Now, I want to talk about the LCD here because it was much larger than the others and a little bit more complicated. There's a second method for figuring out what the LCD should be. Let's look at the two denominators that we have here. We've got 14, which we know is 2 times 7. And we've got 49, which is 7 times 7. Now, the LCD has to be a multiple of both of those. So it's going to have to include 2 and 7 as its factors to make it a multiple of 14. But if it's also going to be a multiple of 49, it has to have two factors of 7. So it's going to have to have another 7 in there. Basically, the LCD has to be a product of factors that includes all of the factors in each of the two denominators. So in this case, it's 2 times 7 times 7, which ends up being 98, as we saw before. For most problems, you won't need to do this. I'd say the vast majority, when you get some practice, you can just look at them and mentally figure out what the LCD is. But for quite large numbers, uh, this method might be a little bit more useful. 